What's going on everybody? In this episode, we're going to talk about how we can create a layout with Material UI. Now, you know how I am. When, when there's code out there that can be used, I'm going to use that, right? We're going to go off of some examples from the documentation that give us a few different variations of popular structures that you might want, and they give all the code on how to do that. So from the Material UI documentation, you can scroll up to the top under getting started and see some templates. And here are the different examples. Feel free to go with a different one other than what I'm going with, which is the dashboard. So we're going to learn how to put our customer information inside of this general structure. Now, before we get started with that, I wanted to give a special thank you and shout out to the sponsor of this section of this series. Are you looking for a file uploader that works well with React? FileStack covers everything from simple file uploading to image transformations. Check them out, I'll leave a link in the description. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the documentation and there is a source code button which will give us all the code we need. Now this is nested quite far. You can clone the main repo if you want. Or what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna take the files that we need and move them into our project. So the most basic one is the dashboard and they have JavaScript and TypeScript versions. We're gonna go with TypeScript. This is the main page. As you can see, there's quite a bit of code here. You can scroll through and copy it all. Or what I like to do is I just like to view the raw version and then collect everything with Command A or Control A. This allows us to easily copy it and we can bring that over into a file on our own project. So here we are in our project. I'm in Next.js, you might be in React. It's gonna be fairly similar. Basically, we're going to have a components folder, which inside of here, we're going to create a new file called dashboard.tsx. And we're going to paste all of that code. So far, so good. As we go through this, we're just going to look at the problems to resolve anything we might be missing. So it looks like we need four files, list items, chart, deposits, and orders. So we'll just go through that same process, starting with list items this time. We will go to the raw to copy it very easily. Now we'll go over to components and say list items.tsx, and we will paste. For some reason, this causes like a weird import problem where it's not resolved. It must be the lowercase l here. So maybe if I rename this to a lowercase l, but that to me is a little strange. I'm not entirely sure what it's expecting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to capitalize that L and then update the imports and that resolves the problem. Next up, I'm gonna go for the chart, copying all this code and then going in and creating a chart.tsx paste. This is going to need a module called recharts. So I'm gonna say npm install recharts. Cool, that resolved that problem. We have a nested dependency on this title file, so that's another one we're going to have to get. So we're just going to continue this process. I'll start with the dashboard files, so we'll get the deposits file next. Deposits.tsx. This one's not that long, so I probably could have just copied it fairly easily. And let's go ahead and create that here. So I'm going to grab the orders now, and we will copy all this bring this over into an orders.tsx. And then the last thing we need is the title file. So we'll go ahead and create that real quick. And I will take this and bring that over here. Perfect, so we've resolved all of our problems and we added one, two, three, four, five, six files. How do we actually view this stuff though? Well, it's all going to start with the dashboard. So this is a component that we can render anywhere. So as an example, we can go into our main index.tsx and instead of rendering a div here, we could render the dashboard. Now, when we visit localhost without anything added to the path, we get that site. Wow, cool. So it really wasn't that bad. We didn't have to change anything. It just works. Now we just have to change everything. <laughs> okay, so where do we even start? Well, the first thing is to surround our code so that if I go to localhost customers, we still have that general theme. We just have this content inside of it. We did this long ago in the series where we created a header and then we used props.children to display stuff inside of that page. So to surround your code inside of Next.js, we're going to go into app.tsx. However, for plain React applications, it's going to be index.tsx. So you can imagine our dashboard starting here, but instead of self-closing it, we would actually 
close it like so, take the closing tag and move that to the end. So now our dashboard surrounds all of our components being rendered. Then inside of our dashboard, and I have so much crap open, what I'm gonna do is just close everything except app.tsx and dashboard.tsx for right now and close this. Inside a dashboard, we could then render the children. So it'd be props.children. So let's take a look inside of the dashboard and scrolling through to the bottom, you'll see that it exports a default function dashboard, which returns dashboard content. I personally didn't find this line to be too valuable. I'm not sure if there's a good reason for doing that, but what I believe is we could just export dashboard content directly. So I'm going to remove this line. And this is just going to make our application a little bit simpler because we're going to have less nesting. So now what we can do is we can scroll up and just find where we have this dashboard content and we can say export default function dashboard content. And then we could just rename it even to just dashboard. Now here we can define props and we'll just set that to any for now. And whenever we surround components like this, these will be assigned to a children property on props. So what that means is we could use props.children inside of our code to display that content. The question is, where do we do that? Well, I was looking through this code myself and I found out where that should be, but if this is your first time looking at this code, you might wanna go through and just familiarize yourself with the different sections. Eventually, you're going to find this component equal to main, and this is inside of a box component. So this is something from Material UI that allows us to do additional things such as style this section. So you can think of it kind of as a div inside of Material UI, but this is where our code for the main section is going to be rendered. So let's just test this out. We'll say h1, hello there. And how will we actually see this? Well, since it's surrounding everything, we're always going to see this. It's going to be the first thing rendered. So you can see now we are on localhost 3000 slash customers and we see that dashboard. The question is, where is the hello there? I'm not seeing it on this page. I search for it and it says it's there, but I'm not seeing it. I think that just comes down to the positioning. So we want to move it after the toolbar. So you can think of the toolbar up here. Well, hello there was just underneath of it. Okay, so now we can see our content. But instead of just doing H1, what I wanna do is actually want to display props.children. This is going to render the content of whatever component we are surrounding and display it in the page. This means when we visit our page, we now see our customer information being displayed. Ah, we're making progress. When we switch to different pages, different content will be displayed here. Now, if we visit the home page, it's gonna look a little funky. And you can see we have like this double sidebar looking thing. Uh, what in the world's going on? Well, that just has to do with what we were doing when we tested out dashboard. Inside of our main index file right here, we displayed dashboard. Well, now this page is being surrounded by dashboard. So we're actually getting two instances of dashboard. So what we'll do is we will just return null for now on here. That should fix that problem. So localhost 3000 just displays the main dashboard. The rest of this stuff after props.children inside of this container, which we can minimize, I'm gonna take this all, cut it, and actually move it to index.tsx. So instead of return null, I'm going to return this container this is going to have to import a ton of junk, so let's go ahead and start doing that. Import container from material slash container. Now we're gonna have to do this for all of these, so it's going to be some work. What we could do is just go over to the dashboard and copy all of these imports and then just remove the ones that we're not using in this page, so let's go ahead and paste that here. We will just have to adjust these paths since we are now in a new file. So up a directory into components into chart. That's going to be the new structure. So I'll add that to all of these here and the last one here. The last problem cannot find name copyright. This is a function so let's go ahead and just take this. It's going to basically just display the correct date. We can remove that here and bring that over here. So I'll just paste that here. 
So by moving everything to index.tsx, it'll only display all these charts and stuff when we are visiting the home page. And now what we can do is we can remove all these unused imports. If we click one of these that's not being used, remove all unused imports, there we go, nice and clean. Let's check out our site now. The index page looks normal, but now we can visit slash customers. All those charts go away and they're replaced with these customers, which it's looking a little funny. The default text here is white, but we're on a white background. I actually think this is just styling pollution from global CSS that I still had from earlier. So what we can do is we can delete everything in here or just delete the files altogether which should be good. This will require us to remove just a single import inside of app.tsx, which is changing all of our styling. So now it should be good. It looks back to normal, and this gives us the opportunity to try changing this font that we have defined right here, just to be sure that these are actually being applied. You can remove them and save, and you can see the change in the structure. So this is the default font, for Material UI, but you can probably change this out for a different font if you are interested. So that is a quick intro on how to create a theme with Material UI without actually creating a theme, just copying a theme that they already have and putting it in your code, which to me is great because we did this in like 15 minutes versus writing code for multiple hours. So I'm happy, I think it looks good. What we're gonna do in the next video though is improve this. Most likely the next video is going to deal with linking and navigation because none of these work. And we have a bunch of pages that we might not actually end up using. A couple of other problems is, well, our subscriber list kind of looks like trash. And overall, the site is just meh, pretty average, honestly. So stay tuned for the next video, I'm looking forward to it. And I'll see you then, be sure to subscribe, peace out.